Time's running. <laughs> welcome, welcome to a talk about um, mobile and embedded de development. Uh, my name is Marcus Bauer, and actually I have started with embedded development, uh, with open source de embedded development already in 2002 on the Compaq IPAC. Um, there was a distribution called Familiar, which still somehow exists um, on handhelds org. Um, both in both varieties with the Qt and the GTK Plus. Um, the Qt was called uh, QPE and the um, GTK Plus was called GPE. Um, so I started in 2002 and at that time it was really, really, really a long way to actually get anything uh, compiled, uh, cross-compiled for these kind of platforms. And um, last year I started a new project uh, which is called uh, Tango GPS, which started out uh, for the um, OpenMoco phone for the OpenMoco free runner. And um, so I have been doing lots of uh, embedded development and the question for me was like, how can you actually ease uh, development, um, embedded development? Huh? And especially if you're coming from the desktop side and you want to say, okay, I want to go into it. Um, how do you get into it and how do you can actually lower your barrier of entry? Of entry huh? So how can you easily get started? How can you get up to speed like in no time? Huh? So um, I'm currently working for a company in Paris, which is the uh, reseller of the open microphones. And um, so they are actually sponsoring this project. Um, we are developing that in the company. And um, so the idea is for the desktop developer to bring you the embedded development to you in absolutely no time. Huh? So I go on here with my slides. Oh, that was one too fast. Okay, so um, one of these, of these typical ideas about embedded development is you have a steep learning curve. Huh? To get started with embedded development, you first have to go into, for example, Scratchbox, or have to go into Open Embedded. And until you get this running, until you understand what's going on there, you first have to sit down and it takes lots of time. It brings me immediately to my first question. Um, who is actually an um, embedded developer here? Embedded developers? Okay, so who knows Scratchbox? Okay, oh, very few, very few. Open Embedded? Oh, very few too. Okay, so the idea was for us actually to start and make um, embedded development easy with a snap. And the thing is, um, the technology has changed in the last years. Yeah? So while in 2002, actually the flash memory was still very, very expensive, the real point nowadays is that flash memory has become extremely cheap. You get a 2 GB um, micro SD card for 4 euros, 5 euros. Okay, so the point now is that actually you can get the whole system onto the chip and you can do your development immediately on the system. So you can completely forget about all this cross-compile environment, huh? all this nightmare. But nothing against Scratchbox, it was a great project. Nothing against Open Embedded is a great project. But have a look how long it takes you to set these systems up. Um, Open Moco, they have a system called Moco Makefile to set up automatically the Open Embedded um, uh, cross compilation environment. How long does it take? In the best case, 24 hours. Right? So 24 hours until you have your system running. If you go to Scratchbox, it's the same. Usually you have what well, it takes you, not 24 hours, but it takes a couple of hours um, until you have everything set up. And um, if you now say, okay, actually we can go, and we can put everything onto a micro SD card, that changes your whole setup, that changes your whole approach. And immediately, I see you, you have already been done, you have already been doing this kind of things. So immediately you're completely rid of that. You're completely rid of Scratchbox, you're completely rid of Open Embedded, and embedded development stops being embedded development. It is like developing on your desktop. And that's the point what we have been doing. So, um, yeah, i just go here forward with my slide. Exactly, that's one of the, of the things, setting up the cross-compile environment is a time-consuming, tedious process. And it's no longer true. Huh? Put that on the SD card, and we have made it, um, we have made our project so that actually you just have a tarball, you untie it on the SD card, so you put the SD card in the card reader, you untie it and you're finished, you're done. Uh, so no more flashing, uh, especially if you do embedded development, 
you always have to flash it into the device. No more flashing, you put it into an SD card, so it depends. We are currently developing for the OpenMoco free runner. Put it onto the SD card, flip it in, and you start it. Yeah? And this is the second thing, because quite often you're working on different projects. So you need to have different setups, and every time you change your setup, you're sitting there again, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, reflashing. And when something goes wrong, and you have to repeat this process, and I've been doing that so much in these last years, that after some time you're just completely fed up with it. Now what do we have? We do have a micro SD card. You simply buy a couple of them, because they cost nothing anymore. They're now like five euros. Five euros you have for every development, um, for every project. You have your micro SD card. You have a couple even for every project. You flip it in. Two minutes later, you are in the environment, and you can already start compiling. Okay, go on here. So, what is it? So, the, the name of the project is called Hackable One, um, and basically, it is a Debian on a micro SD card with everything already installed. Because we are all used that everything goes really fast. And nowadays, you do an update install, 15 seconds later, it's on your on your computer, readily installed. Not so on an embedded platform, because it's simply slow. Yeah? It is everything there, you have a good hardware, but things are slow. So what we have been doing here, with all the libraries already on the microSD card, we simply use the space. If we have two gigabytes of a microSD card, you put everything in there, and when you do development, it's not, oh, this header is now missing, oh, this library is missing, nothing. Put it in, go on, start, and start development. Huh? Okay, so what have we been doing? Um, we are using the GTK Plus stack, so we are a GNOME, kind of GNOME mobile initiative. Um, you probably have heard GNOME has a project, um, part of the GNOME project is mobile and embedded. And so we are here using pretty much the same out of the um, GNOME mobile the, um, software stack, so we are using the same libraries, GTK Plus, um, Dbus, um, Evolution Data Server, everything already there on your, on your platform. What else do we have? We do have, um, we do have a stack of PIM applications, so personal information management information, and we do have um, phone applications. Um, they're still quite rudimentary, um, but we do have a dialer, and we do have an SMS application. Actually, what we did, um, OpenMoco um, had been developing these kind of applications. And then they just um, dumped the whole development, and so we just went on from there where they left. And we're now going and trying to refine the whole system. But our focus is actually really to set up a system for developers. We're developing ourselves, so we're not making a distribution for, finally, not for the end user. We are making a distribution for developers and um, simply for devices um, that are mobile terminals and not really phones. No? Okay, going on here. Yeah. What is it? Um, it is good to developers, and what does it mean? It is a fast and easy coding platform. So you just start, you sit down, you make your development on your desktop machine, you compile your stuff on your desktop, you see if it is working on the desktop, you make your tarball, kick it over to the, um, onto the platform, and you just recompile it. And in 99.99% of the cases, it will just compile. So, all this process that you had before of making development, embedded development, and you had to go over again in the process, all cut down. You do the development as you use on your desktop. So if you're a desktop developer, you will be immediately at home. You just start. There's nothing. The differences for you are actually from a completely different uh, corner. So you now have to fight with tiny screens. You have now a small screen, but you have a uh, high resolution. DPIs. Yeah? There's a good question what you're actually going to do because um, some people would say, okay, here you have 285 DPI, that's a very high resolution. So, but actually, it makes no sense to really go with the resolution, make everything small or big, and you will immediately see that you run into problems that you didn't know before. But your development process, as such, is easy. No change from doing desktop development. Huh? So this is really what I want to say, like, if you're already a desktop developer, just try it out. I mean, we are currently here, I have to say, we're currently here based on the, on the OpenMoco platform. We try to extend it to other platforms. Um, probably have, has somebody heard from the BeagleBoard? You know the BeagleBoard? A really interesting project. project. Uh, we should probably look it up. 
Um, what we're doing for is mostly for the um, ARM platforms. Huh? So we're not going into Intel platforms, we're going to ARM platforms um, simply because we have a completely different spectrum of um, applications. I'm coming to that soon. I haven't done that here. Okay, yeah, exactly. Here's my next uh, slide. Why do you go ARM, um, OMAP? Simply because you have a low power consumption. Yeah? The, what I try is like, what is the difference? Oops, that's cable. What's the difference between um, the Intel platforms and the ARM platforms? Um, simply because you can go here and you can get away with just um, a tenth of a watt. Right? So we can have, we will have in the future lots of applications that are not phones. They will be just simply applications that you probably a bit bigger like this with a bigger screen, having inside an ARM processor, and they'll be running for hours and hours without needing any kind of recharging. Yeah? So because if you have a look for the netbooks, they still use 10 watt. And if you go for ARM, you can easily get away with half a watt. So you need a little battery, and you can have applications. And we are now all more and more connected, internet, everywhere. We have Wi-Fi, we have 3G coming, prices are falling. So we will have plenty of these applications, of these appliances. And what we are trying to do is simply having a platform for all these upcoming applications. And this is what I want to tell you, what, what really what probably my mission is today, is to say, if you're a des desktop developer, don't miss out. Yeah? Because all the big companies that are sitting there, Intel, they're sitting there making open source, actually, with Moplin. They're, they're pushing millions into it, yeah? because they know that this is going to come. And so we actually, we have been started, we have, we here, we have been starting the open source yeah? Yeah? years ago, two decades ago. Um, and actually it is us who have been laying this kind of foundation. And I think it is up to us actually to go into there and say like, well, yes, yes, this is going to come. And we go into this kind of, um, into this kind of future applications. Yeah? And this means actually starting and getting a feeling for that, getting a feeling for GPRS, getting a feeling for this totally lousy kind of network con connectivity. Uh, if you have ever been working with GPIs, you get just crazy. Uh, yeah, I <laughs> see that here. And simply, simply going for that. So if you are already a developer, just grab one of these, of these platforms, either this OpenMoco or, as I said, BeagleBoard is another interesting platform, very hackable. And um, just go for it and start your development. Okay, one more. Yeah. This is exactly what, um, what I was saying, like, what about um, Intel, Nokia, etc. So we have Nokia, we have Nokia with Memo, we have Intel with Moplin. Why do we need another distribution? And for me it is having fun. Yeah? Hack yourself. Try to go and say to Intel with Moplin, well, actually I wrote a really nice SMS application, I want to get that into there. Right. Come on, it's never going to happen. So this is why I say, like, here, okay, you write a nice SMS application, you can easily get it onto it, because it's, again, we are community, yeah? We are the open source community, and actually we can take our place back from the big companies. Okay. Thank you very much for listening, and, um, yeah, that was my talk for today, and I hope I got you interested. <laughs> Yes. Any questions? Questions? Yes. I, I'm. Well, I um, what I develop on. So uh, I personally use uh, Debian and uh, GTK, and um, I'm using C. But um, the platform is actually open to any kind of GTK plus binding. And if you finally decide you want to use Qt, you can use Qt too. Yeah? C, C++, uh, Python, um, whatever comes to your mind. Um, yeah? yeah? I'd go up there. Well, currently we are supporting the um, free runner. We are going to look. Um, there's some work being done on the servers. Um, we are going to go for the um, Beagle board, and we are probably having a look into the uh, Nokia devices too. No. That was him. Uh, absolutely, from my side, absolutely yes, um, absolutely yes, simply because there's so much work to do that it makes no sense to do whatever we can share with other people, we want to share with other people, absolutely. Because they wonder why they haven't been contacted yet. 
I have been talking to Joachim, Joachim Breitner on um, Luca when I see. Is here. Hmm? Luca Capello is here. Ah, okay, good. Yeah, all right. Um, I'm absolutely open to that. Yeah. More questions? Okay. Have a nice, great evening and um, good fostum. Thanks.